Excellency, my name is uh, Ezekiel Onyango, but you can call me Easy. <laughs> I'm currently the chairperson of Kenya Film and Television Professionals Association. Professionally, I'm a researcher in the cultural and creative industries. I have a master's degree from the University of Manchester in that area, and a creative economy expert who has worked globally with organizations like IFC, AU, and the World Conference on the Creative Economy. I stand before you today as someone who has worked for almost two decades as a film producer in Kenya and a creative economy practitioner, who has successfully managed to transition into a professional. We stand at a very critical time in our country, and the question of jobs is one that the creative economy can easily respond to. It's only the creative economy in the whole world that... E easy. Hmm. Take it easy. <laughs> because I was expecting a question from you, but uh, you've given me a lecture, which is good. Because uh, from Manchester, it's good to get some experience. But can you make it brief? The sweet spot is always in the context, and I have learned from watching the way you have contextualized the conversation today. So I only thought it would be fair for me to put some context before my question, if you allow me, sir. Thank you. Um, Bottom-up policies that promote the growth of talent-driven sectors like ours have been proven to work, especially in the creative economy, as we have witnessed in countries like Indonesia, where in 2023 they reported 4% contribution of GDP, which is equivalent to what the tourism sector has contributed in Kenya. While we appreciate the bottom-up strategy that you have that has given us the State Department for Youth and Creative Economy, we as the creative industry experts feel like there is a tension where there is a bottom-up strategy but a top-down approach in implementation where the industry has been left out and that has left the State Department with systemic inefficiencies and two years in, we are yet to even have a roadmap or a plan of how we can fix our systemic challenges. Before my question, I'll say to you three important areas that we need to address urgently as a country for the creative economy to respond. Number one is outdated policy frameworks, the case of old laws trying to tackle new problems. Number two is intellectual property. To every creative person, that is our title deed. That is our bargaining power. When IP is not protected, then we have nothing. And number three is the problem of piracy. The small endemic that has injured Kenya and no one speaks about. I can be able to demonstrate that in one financial year, Kenya loses close to 92 billion shillings because of piracy, both to government and industry. To my question, how does your administration plan through the State Department to resolve these issues inclusively, decisively, and set up a ground where these creative economies can grow and respond to job creation? Why I ask this question is if we are not careful, there will come a time very soon where all the commerce that happens in the creative industry will happen overseas. Production will happen locally, consumption will happen locally, but the platforms in which we do our commerce will all be abroad. So what strategies can we put in place to ensure that creative technologies are integrated in the better plan to respond to IP challenges, the problem of piracy, and the problem of outdated policy frameworks? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, my good friend. I don't have the people from the youth department here, but let me just mention to you that um, the reason why I made a policy decision that the sports fund, which initially had been spread to cover many things, including building hospitals and building all manner of things, I said that must now stop so that we concentrate the sports fund on matters to do with sports and the creatives. That is uh, policy direction number one. 
Number two, you have said correctly about outdated laws. It is the thing I was struggling with, even with the BPOs. And it's the reason why on Wednesday, we will be signing off to change the law in the employment space around the BPOs. Um, and I agree with you that outdated laws have created a big problem for us. Whether we are talking about uh, what we can do around the film, around the whole creative uh, space. And I remember we had trouble trying to bring on board the Grammys. I remember we had very serious uh, challenges and we had, I had personally to get involved, you know, for, for some of these to come on board on what we can do around the studio and what we can do around that space. And I remember Dennis Itumbi, who I'm sure is somewhere here, um, uh, pushing me to, to, to do certain things. Did you hear what uh, that good man said? And uh, can you help me yes. say some of those things that uh, we agreed that we want, especially on the two subjects of uh, intellectual poverty and piracy? So on intellectual property and piracy, sir, Easy has actually been involved in the crafting of the Creative Economy Bill. And he's still pending in Parliament, and uh, he's played a good part with his association of coming with that. And that is a, key, is a key part in that Creative Economy Bill with a few amendments. And he's in the working group, so in fact the challenge should be back to him to ensure that he helps us to ensure that we get it back and uh, good and going. However, he's raised two key issues, both if you allow me to respond to him. Yes. The first one is on the commerce of the creative economy. Uh, the president went to the USA and interacted, including with Hollywood stars at Taylor Perry Studios. And one of the things that the president is now working on is in a, for a space for the creative economy. We all appreciate that Nairobi on Sundays has become an open theater where people actually shoot everything. In fact, ahead of Easy there is a gentleman from Grammy Awards. And there is also something there you are doing around the Grammy Awards for Africa. And we have actually instructed the State Department to pay so that then the Grammy Awards can be hosted in Kenya. There are few things to unlock, and this gentleman has an appointment with you this week to unlock that part. So on that part of commerce, we are not only interested, but you are actively playing a part on it. Finally, the President has already given instructions, and uh, I'm, I've written to you a letter from our Office of Creative Economic Coordination for us to begin bidding for the wild creative economy conference in 2027 to become the first african country to bring the world sector here because that will unlock the entire creative economy thank you very much let me help you dennis actually the money for grammys we already paid we are not about to pay we already we already, we already paid 500 million shillings to us and i'm sure the gentleman from grammys can confirm that that is the direction we are going um, and so, I think, back to you, the motions are going through in Parliament, the creative bill is going through specifically to remove the challenges you have highlighted, to update the law so that we remove outdated legislation, to provide for a, a sure footing on matters intellectual property, and also to deal with the challenge or piracy and and we couldn't agree with you more and thank you very much easy for being part of the solution by offering your, your your knowledge and expertise to support the development of the bill that is how we manage to solve problems thank you very much now we, we are still we got lost we were still